Hi, my name is Ling and I am a G3 at NYU. I just want to do a disclaimer because today we're going to do a tutorial on amalgam. So the disclaimer is I am still a student, I am not a licensed professional or anything, so these are just things that I've picked up over the years that I've been a student and I think these are things that could, might be able to help somebody just starting to do an amalgam, not knowing every single little step. So we're going to take you step by step. First thing you're going to need is your basic, everything, your mirror, well you don't need the pill, but you need an explorer for sure, and you need um, card pliers, okay? You're going to need a matrix band, oops, and a Toffelmeyer retainer, and you're going to need a wedge. You want a nice thick wedge so that way you can kind of separate the teeth a little and make room for not only the band but a nice tight contact. You're going to need your amalgam well and a amalgam carrier. And then you're going to need your condensers, right? And they come in all different sizes. You start with the smallest one, and then you work your way up. And then you're going to need some carvers. I personally really like the Hollenbach, and I like the smaller one. It gives you a little more control, and it's nice and sharp, nice and long, and it helps you get that pretty occlusal anatomy. You're going to need, I like the discoid cleoid, again, the small one, so you can get the detail. So this is the cleoid part, because it's sharp. And here's the discoid part. And then you're going to need an interproximal carver, the nice thin one, so that way you can get interproximal and get all that extra amalgam out. You can use a burnisher. Um, this is the acorn burnisher. Some people have a ball burnisher, football burnisher. Um, but you, I'll show you when I use this. Okay. Also, you're going to need your rubber dam. I like to have my rubber dam nice and set up, holes punched, floss ligated to the clamp, clamp in the in the rubber dam, and the frame already attached. So that way, when they go start, you can go ahead and put this all on in one piece without trying to um, fiddle with it. And then, of course, you're going to need your typodont. And right now, we're going to be filling number 30, right? And if you notice, it's a very, very big, wide prep because if you are able to fill an amalgam into this wide prep, you can do it on any kind of prep. Okay, so actually before we start, we're going to go over dental anatomy because it's really important. So we're going to be restoring tooth number 30, right? So I have 30 in my hand. So the first thing we want to look at is the central groove, right? I see a lot of people when they start restoring these teeth, they actually make a big plus in the middle. And if you look really closely, it's not a plus. So can somebody tell me what it is? It's a zigzag or an M, right? So zigzag. So do not go straight ahead and make a big plus because it's not going to look like a tooth, right? So central groove is zigzag. The next thing you want to do is look at the cusp. So let's look at the lingual cusp first. The lingual cusps are more contoured than the facial cusp because if you look, it really does have a rise and a fall, right? And it really does give you that nice triangular ridge. On the other side, if you look, the buccal cusps are a little more flat. They still have a little bit of contour to them, but they're not as prominent as the lingual. Again, account for all five cusps, right? Account for these grooves right here, especially because you're doing an MO, you're gonna want these grooves. That way it looks like a nice marginal ridge. When you're carving it, keep in mind that marginal ridges should be the same height as the tooth next to it. So my suggestion to you is before you even start just trying to carve, Make sure you go and you study the anatomy. Every single tooth that you're going to restore, you need to know the anatomy. That way you're able to restore it. Okay? So the first thing you do is put on the rubber dam. We're doing quadrant isolation. So it's one tooth past the midline. And so you put, I've been putting the clamp on 31, so I still have access and the band can go over 30. I like it with floss and I stopped it from popping out with a little piece of rubber dam here. Put the frame on. And well, let's get started. So the thing is, I'm going to do this tabletop so that way the camera can really see it and you guys can actually see it. Of course, you're going to have to do this in the mouth. And so you're going to have to figure out how to position your hands and everything. So the first thing you want to do is you're going to put on your matrix band. So this is how I remember. It's kind of like a U, right? And a U. U goes towards the gum so that way when you pull out, you're not, you pull out and you, um, you're not hurting the patient because if you put it on this way, you're going to have to push into the gums and that's kind of painful, just a little bit, okay? So you and you, fold it in half, slide it in and 
pick which side you're going to put it on. Tighten the last small knob so that way it holds the matrix in place. So go until it's nice and tight, right? Nice and tight. Kind of, I bend it a little to get a little more shape to it and then place it around the tooth. Make sure you push it in and make sure it goes down. Make sure there's no rubber dam stuck in between the band and the tooth, right? And then you're gonna take the larger knob and you're gonna start tightening it, right? So you're gonna tighten the band until it's nice and snug and you can keep on, you can pull this side to side before you tighten it all the way so that way you have a nice contour of the band. It contours really nicely towards the tooth, okay? Once you get that done, you're gonna place your wedge. So wedges come from the lingual, flat side towards the gingiva, pointy side towards the occlusal. You're gonna push it in and you wanna get nice, nice tight wedging because you wanna get some separation between the teeth. That way it accommodates for the band that's gonna be in there. So that way you have nice tight contact, okay? So now that everything's set up, we're gonna go ahead and start the restoration part. You're gonna get your first capsule. I know some people do two capsules at a time, but I like doing one at a time. I like using the first one for the marginal ridge and then the second one for the occlusal so you have more time in between so that way you can carve. So I'm gonna take the amalgam carrier. I'm gonna put a finger in below this because once you push and you don't have your finger there, things are just gonna come out, right? So you put your finger in there and you start to pick up the amalgam. Right. You're going to place it into your proximal box, right? And you're going to start to condense. Condense with the smallest plugger, right? And I'm going to use a modified pen graft, two fingers, because you really want to push. If you guys listen really carefully, do you hear that crunching sound? Kind of like snow crunching when you're walking on it? That's the sound you want to hear. You don't want to just lightly tap because that's not going to do anything. You want nice pressure. And when you're doing this in a patient, especially on the mandibular, you're going to put your, your hand under their chin and support their chin. That way you don't dislocate their jaw. Okay, so I'm going side to side, buckle lingually, and I'm also going to push against the adjacent two. Okay? And you only spend a couple seconds, and then you go ahead and pick up more. No more than 30 seconds in between condensing because amalgam does have a time limit. So you add more amalgam and you're just going to condense. Nice and nice amount of pressure, that way you get nice and condensed amalgam. The better you condense it, when you go to carve, the prettier it's going to be. There's not going to be any pores, right, or anything. So again, buckle, lingual, and then against the adjacent two, right? And when you feel like the small plugger is just moving stuff around and not really condensing so much, go to a bigger plugger. So I'm focusing all of this, all of the amalgam where the marginal ridge is first because I want that to set first. I'm moving up to a bigger condenser because I feel like the small one is just pushing things around. Okay. Again, I'm pushing until I hear that crunching sound. Once your marginal ridge is filled up, you're going to start working on your occlusal. And remember, with amalgam, you want to overbuild. That way you have stuff, extra material to work with and carve down. So now I'm going to start condensing the occlusal. Again, you want to condense buckle and lingually, okay? You're not gonna condense straight down. It's gonna get into the corners of your prep and you need every single 
space in there condensed, right? I'm starting to use the bigger end of the carrier because now we're working on the occlusal and we're higher up for more occlusal now so we can start condensing um, so we can start getting that, some of that. Um, there's not as much small cracks in there so you don't need to use a small one. And I'm starting to use the big condenser but again I'm listening for that crunching sound. So I'm going to go again buckle and lingual. Okay and we're going to overbuild. Do you see how fast I'm moving? You need to move fast, that way you can have some time to work on the occlusal anatomy. Okay. So I am overbuilding, buckle lingually, and now I'm above where the cusps are, so I'm going to push on the cusp, right? Try on the amalgam, and then on the cusp, that way I have a nice seal. Alright, so I'm done condensing.